Sekiro is not a game that I have finished. And in fact, I don't think I ever will. That ape just destroyed my spirit in every sense of the word. Today, we are going to be listening to the owl. I don't know if I've heard this before. Let's go. Okay, unrelenting, right? If I recall, the owl was Sekiro's mentor. If that's the case, let me attach that thread to this. This is a fight against someone you shouldn't have to fight. But I think there's a ruthlessness here that we hear automatically. It's forceful. It's aggressive. It's violent. But then there's a bit of dissonance up at the top here. That part is the torment or the sadness or the frustration at having to fighting someone that helped you and guided you throughout the game. And, and maybe you, know, you didn't anticipate that you were going to fight, but now you have to. And so there's this antagonistic emotional quality here. We know what we have to do. And and yet, it's not that we don't want to, it's just that it's a, sh it's a shame, right? But yet, there's not a lot of time to really stop and think about that because we have to continue to move because we have this, if I recall, he's a very large man coming after us and we have to defend ourselves. So there's a bit of this antagonistic romantification in a way with the strings there and also with some of the more traditional Japanese instruments that is operating in, in counterpoint to this which is really, really interesting to hear. So then we have that section where essentially the drums come to the forefront and it's unrelenting. There is this brutality musically that exists when we hear, I think these are taiko drums, uh, I don't know, but just that bump at the bump. Unrelenting is the word I've used several times in the first few minutes here. The raw nature of this, it's almost like a desire to consume or one has to protect themselves so much from this force of nature that will stop at nothing to destroy us. And it really is, is apparent when we have this drum, which gives us this real primal animalistic vibe. And of course it's called the owl, which that makes sense. So that the animal though is, uh, it, we're being hunted and being chased.
You hear this pain more when the chorus comes in. There's a moment where it dies down, and perhaps this is the second phase music here, but there's that stillness right before there's this sort of enraged quality that exists here. Almost like he grows like double in size or something, and an unrelenting sort of berserker mode. And, and the chorus, I think, also plays into the duality of the plight of man, or like having to, to fight someone you trusted, or the sense and the sting of betrayal. Obviously, I know a little bit about the story, so that's inferring my decision a little bit. But this intensity in the chorus really, really adds a, an extra layer of, in a way, a horror element, you know? Like, it's just shocking that this situation is occurring or that we're fighting this this being that essentially wants to to destroy us and and break us down to our to the to a pulp and, and if we aren't fast and aren't efficient that'll happen but at the same time as we enter into this final minute or so there is also a twinge of sadness that's coming through in the strings um here Yeah, do you hear how the strings take on a different quality? And there's also less drumming, which means that there's a natural uh, slowing down to the battle at this point. There's a natural climax and peak near the beginning of the middle section, and then we sort of taper off once the battle has been won, and we sort of are allowed to view on the past and view on what's occurred and what's to come and, you know, why this has all happened. It's very interesting and very sad. I mean, this is my personal opinion, but it's almost like don't meet your idols or something, like don't meet your heroes or, or you know, like everyone eventually will let you down. I don't know, I think also it probably speaks to how even noble people turn evil and their judgment gets clouded. I just want to really quickly watch just like like 30 seconds of this fight just so I get a sense of what I'm what I was thinking about why boy why can't you understand your father's will oh it's his father have you forgotten the shinobi code <sighs> a code must be determined by the individual this is what I've decided Oh, Nashir Dalal does Just the English. Master did. So good. <laughs> oh yeah, there's an unwillingness here, unless he's about to... He doesn't want to. This game is good though. It's just a little too hard for my taste. I should try again. So now we're in the boss fight proper. Enough talk. Been a while since we did this. Give me your all. He's ruthless. Never stops despite his size. 
Yeah, that's interesting. Father, not a mentor, but but so but it was he, he's an adopted father. I can't remember, but that intensity really is coming through here. And if I recall correctly, I don't remember when this is in the game. I think it's early on, and this is before we go into the past or whatever. Clearly, there's this brutality and this brute force and this restlessness. That juxtaposition of the father versus the son, adopted or not, it's painful, and and that comes across in the music, I think, very well. So more Sekiro on the way for sure. More Bloodborne. More more from Soft in general. I know it's been a minute since I've done a FromSoft video, unless you're watching a playlist, in which case that's not true. I will talk to you later. I really appreciate it. Thanks as always. Bye.